Namaste, everyone. My name is Ayush Goyal, and I am a 10th grader from Cupertino, California. I welcome you all with an open heart and gratitude. My younger sister, Rihanna, who is a 7th grader, and I started this effort to globally spread mindfulness as a result of our own experiences stemming from shelter in place. Our organization provides a free online platform for people of all cultures, abilities, and ages to practice mindfulness led by certified practitioners as well as world-renowned artists. We have offered several camps and workspaces attended by people in the US, Europe, and Asia. But right now, as India hurts and heals together, we wanted to bring this mindfulness and art series to provide a healing, ser healing service for all of you. Namaste, my name is Rihanna and we are very humbled by your presence and the collective consciousness to work together. Only for this intro class, we will use some time at the beginning to share our vision and purpose for being together with you. When the world shut down abruptly in March 2020, Ayush and I realized that the only way out is to go within. We have been practicing mindfulness for four years, but I am yet to learn how to keep calm when Ayush eats the donut I have been saving up for later. In this series together, we will gradually unfold the many benefits of mindfulness. Now, many people ask us the difference between mindfulness and meditation. Meditation is a practice that cultivates mindfulness. We will use art as a medium for creative expression. You will become mindful and more spontaneous as you start drawing. I want all of you to know that there are no mistakes in this workshop. Your art is an expression of whatever you feel in the moment. Today. We are very privileged and honored to have many accomplished and highly acclaimed practitioners and artists support our cause. Thank you, Mrs. Monica, Mr. Vikas, and Mr. Paul to join our journey. This class is conducted in English, but please ask if you need help in Hindi. We will create two mon different mandalas in the first two weeks, but we will use the four next four weeks to create one intricate mandala. Please feel free to turn on your video and message us through the chat if you have any questions. I will now ask Mr. Paul to provide a short intro about himself, and then Mrs. Kamran will start the guided meditation. Over to you, Mr. Paul. Good evening, good morning, namaste. Something that I've been saying namaste for the last 35 years. As when I was a young man, I owned several businesses and I just thought that was the best way to go through life. And as I got to my uh, mid thirties, the spiritual started to call me. And my father was an artist and my mother was an art teacher. So I had a lot of art in my family and about Oh, mid thirties, I started to draw and paint and more and more and more. And then by the time I was 38 or 39, all I wanted to do was art. And I studied with many teachers, did many spiritual workshops. Um, and I slowly practiced several different kinds of art. And then one day I was at a mountain retreat for 10 days up in the mountains with several people, some very, very famous. And I can't say how or why, but um, I painted a mandala. It took me about seven days. It was the first one I ever did. And on the last day of the workshop, I put it on the floor and I unveiled it. And when they asked me about what it was, I said that I could say things in the painting that I had no words for. And everybody sat and stared at it for maybe five minutes. And then the teacher handed me a blank check and said, hey, fill this out. I don't care what you charge, I'm buying this. And two other people in that workshop said, hey, I want your next painting. And so that's how I started. And I started painting on the uh, weekends because I had a job running my businesses and they were surf shops. I had six surf shops and I was a very famous surfer at the time, but in the late 30s, when I started to do art, 
it was the most amazing thing that I just became so alive and so um, full of feelings. It was like, if I look back on that time now, what had happened to me as I started painting was my heart started to open. And when your heart opens, you see things differently. And I got so fascinated by art. I started studying many different kinds of artists. I had several teachers. I did private workshops. I went mountain retreats. And then all of a sudden in this one small workshop with 11 people that I was just mentioning, I painted this mandala. And I can tell you that my life is pre-mandala and post-mandala because the moment I found the mandala, my life changed just radically. Uh, I was not the same person. I had over the next couple of years to let go of most of my friends. I had a family that went away. Um, and the more I got into it, the more passion I had. And I started giving talks and people started coming to the talks and ordering paintings. And it was the most amazing thing to be able to sit in, in studio. I'd been meditating at this time Oh, for at least 15 years, I was fortunate to grow up in a family where my father was a vegetarian. So he introduced us to many kinds of foods. Uh, my mother was really into health. So I was lucky in the fact that I grew up with meditation and healthy food. So in my mid thirties, when this art started to happen, I was set up to really be an artist. It, it's hard to imagine me not as an artist because I live it every day. Uh, I've traveled um, the entire world and I will again. Actually, last week I applied for a, a global entry pass so I could get on planes quicker and fly off to parts in the world where I need to teach workshops and people have been waiting for me for a couple of years. So over the next six weeks, we're gonna do some very simple exercises. You don't need any skill, none. You just need to be present. Just like if you're gonna breathe you just need to be present to take a breath. We're gonna do a similar thing to that uh, and do something very, very easy. And I wanna thank uh, Mrs. Carmen now, who's gonna take you on a little meditation and then we'll actually get back to uh, practicing something very, very simple. And mandala drawing is a form of meditation and that's what we're gonna be doing. Thank you, Paul, thank you so much. Namaste, everybody. My name is Monica Kamran. I'm going to lead you through a short meditation just to be present and to get the best out of you for your creative journey. So please sit in a comfortable posture with your spine straight and your shoulders aligned to the spinal column. Adjusting your body to be on a position that aligns with your comfort level today. Gently close your eyes or soften your gaze. Focusing on your breath, taking a deep breath in and out. Just noticing how your breath enters and exits your body. And now in your mind's eye, imagine yourself standing beside a beautiful, peaceful pond. There are green trees around the edges. They're tall, majestic, and there's a gentle breeze blowing. You start walking around the pond, noticing colorful flowers, beautiful, butterflies fluttering around and the fragrance of the flowers just fills the air. The breeze feels just right. You see a very inviting bench and sit down, allowing yourself to be filled with the serenity of this place. As you look down next to the bench, you see a pile of pebbles, beautiful little stones, each unique and special. Slowly and one by one, you pick up the pebbles and start throwing them in the pond. 
as you throw each pebble ripples are made ripples in ever expanding circles intersecting and mingling in random patterns these ripples are just like your thoughts expanding connecting intersecting and growing you realize that if you throw in pebbles of peace in your life you get more peace judgmental thoughts create more judgment and fear so throw in pebbles of love joy compassion and peace in your life pick as many as you like and throw them in the pond letting go of all fears and judgments and now once again look around now that you have thrown all the pebbles look around yourself at the blue sky and the green trees it is time to come back to your body knowing that you can go back to this place any time you like so slowly come back to your body by focusing on your breath breathing in and out another deep breath in and out keeping your eyes closed bring your hands in prayer position next to your heart we are just going to chant om namo shivaya three times remembering lord shiva the lord of transformation creation and destruction so take a deep breath in and silently or loudly as you wish chant with me om namo shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Feeling relaxed and letting go of all fear embracing peace slowly and gently open your eyes ready to embark on this meditative creative journey thank you over to you paul om namo shivaya it's one of my favorite chants okay so let's let's talk about the mandala comes from uh, ancient india ancient tibet it's been around for at least 6000 years um it's practiced in many cultures and the essence of the mandala is healing it's about healing and it's for healing so whether you look at a mandala whether you draw a mandala whether you buy a mandala and put it up in your home that does not matter the fact that there's a mandala around it's a basic symbol of healing so how does the mandala work well the typical mandala is a square with a circle in it in the middle of it and that's what we're going to be doing this evening something just very very simple you can see over each of my shoulders these are a couple of mandalas that are in the middle of of bringing them into manifestation which is what the artist does So even if you had any art uh haven't had any art experience what we're going to share with you is something very basic very easy it's as simple as a, a meditation it's a very simple uh meditation so the image that we're going to work with is all you need is a piece of paper and i prefer a square piece of paper one pencil and a compass if you don't have a compass 
than any kind of circular like cups, plates, a glass, a, a money like a quarter. You can do, you can use that. That's all you need here at the beginning. So let's talk about the square. What a square represents is a foundation and it's straight and it's strong. And it has four sides, which represent the four directions. Now, if you don't have a square piece of paper, you can do this also on a rectangle, but it's a little bit easier to do it on a square. So as I was saying, it represents the four directions. It is a strong foundation. Most homes are built on squares and it, it's balanced. So the sides are equal on the up and down and the sides is equal. So it's a, it's a very stable form and it's considered masculine. Now, what do I mean by that? When you look at the universe and in lots of languages, there's male and female words, especially in Spanish and French. I'm not so sure about Hindi, but it's probably there. That the straight lines represent the masculine. It's just a way for us to see it a little better, feel a little better and understand what it is. If you look around the, the world, you'll see male and female in all walks of life, even in trees. You have a male avocado tree, next to a female avocado tree. And if they're both not, if they're not there, either one of them, then you don't get any avocados. So the, the, the function of the square is to give us a foundation of masculine. So we're gonna make a circle in that. In a few minutes, I'm gonna show you very easy how to, to do this. And I'm giving you a little bit of background in the basic mandala so you'll understand what it is. It may be just a square with a few circles in it, but it represents something that's very deep and very healing. You can start at the surface in a mandala and you can go way deep down into its mystery, uh, relating to your own mystery. It's 100% safe. There's nothing to worry about. And yet it can have a very powerful, profound effect on each individual. I've been teaching mandalas for the last 30 years. I just finished a workshop yesterday and I'm starting another one tomorrow. So this is right in between uh, my workshops. And people have come from all walks of life, several countries in the world. And it doesn't matter your background or your language or your artistic ability. The mandala is a fundamental healing image and it's known uh, many cultures like the Tibetan culture and Native American cultures have made mandalas on the ground where you sit on the mandala and you actually chant healing. Or you look at a mandala on the wall and you sit in front of it and meditate it and it can foster healing. So as we get into this project, the best result is not only can you do something that's very simple, but you have a possibility of healing and calming yourself down. All over the world now, people are stressed out. I see it in my own family. I see it around my neighbors and friends. I'm in communication with lots of people all over the world and we're all feeling stress. So it's a very good time for us to practice visual meditation. This is using your eyes to meditate. So we're gonna start with something is, I talked about a square, a very easy square. And what, what we're gonna do is simply any kind of a ruler, if you don't have a ruler, any kind of a straight edge or a piece of cardboard. And if you don't have that, you can eat, draw the lines as straight as you can because that's the start. So if I draw four lines around the, the square, it brings me to this. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see the lines in there? There, I've done it very lightly, but there's lines right here. There's four lines. Let me, let me make this a little darker so you can see. Now, can you see that line? Yeah, there it is. You can see that better. So you do that in all four sides. That's establishing a foundation. Once you've done that around the four sides, you take the little ruler or a piece of cardboard or a stick, anything you have that straight works, and you lay it down and you make a little X in the middle. So you lay down the ruler diagonally, 
This is something I learned in high school way back a long time ago. You lay it down diagonally and you make a little X in the middle. Now, what does that mean? So what the X means in the middle is that you're practicing the art of centering. When I was studying with, I had a spiritual, I've had several spiritual teachers, but one for 33 years, I was lucky enough to meet him in my, in my early 20s and he was with me until I was almost 60. The, when you make an X in the middle, you're practicing the art of centering. And he would always say, have you centered? Especially in times of tumult. If there's people out there right now, if you're hurting, you're in pain, your family's gone through some kind of a trauma, centering is the best way I know of to share with you how to move from the stress into something much more calmer. As a matter of fact, every morning and during the day, I take my two hands and I put them on my heart. And I do this as a practice of centering. You can do this in a class. You can do it at work, in a car, in a boat. Uh, when you're riding in a bus, you just put your hands on your heart. Because what the mandala has taught me is our cultures, and I'm sure India is very much like the US, is the culture, the basic part of the culture is all about here. It's about the mind and it's about the masculine. What the mandala has taught me over the years is by learning how to center the mandala, I've learned how to center myself right here in the heart center. So the two cross lines center at my heart. And so what the little drawing we're gonna do means is you're recognizing that your center is your heart, not the brain like we think. And as we talked earlier about the feminine and the masculine, although we haven't talked about the feminine yet, we're going to do that in a moment. The masculine and the mind, and this is what the mandala would teach you, is it's about separation. And that's our world, we're separated. We're all separate with boundaries and streets and addresses and email addresses, it's all about separation. And as I, st I started to do the mandala, and I practiced this art of making a little X in the middle of the painting. And this, the small drawing we're gonna do tonight, between now and next week, if you'll just take a few minutes during the day, maybe in the morning or in the evening, my spiritual teacher had me do this exact same thing way back in 1987, 86, actually even earlier than that, the early 80s, that I began the practice of centering myself. And it's the most valuable tool I have to go through life. I'm about centering. And uh, so we're gonna practice that. If you didn't know that, you should know it now. It's the center. This is healthy. This can be unhealthy. This is the truth. This is how we are connected. This is how we are disconnected. If the world, was run by the heart, no children would be hungry. There would not be poor people. We would take care of the people everywhere. That's the way it is. That's why in, when you're doing the mandala practice, you realize that the females should be running the world, not the males. <laughs> I, I'm getting a little off, but when you're doing mandala work, this is the kind of thing you discover. So we're gonna put that in that X, if you have a glass or a cup, try to make a circle around it that um, is from the center. So I'm gonna use this and I'm putting the part of it down right here. And I'm simply gonna make a circle. Now you can do this with a plate or a cup or a piece of glass, uh, anything that's round. You can see that pretty good. Okay, can you see that circle? Okay, you sit down, yeah. So what you've done by that is you've not only established a foundation, you've established a center point and you've made a circle around. Now what the circle represents is the feminine. There's no end, there's no beginning. It's a curved line. If you look at females, 
their body is all about curves. If you look at men, you look at real strong men, it's all about being straight. It's about being straight. So the men mirror the masculine and the woman mirror the feminine. So in this simple project that we're doing, just a few minutes, we actually have a tool now that we can meditate on. Now, when I first learned this from my teacher, I put this right next to my bed and I looked at it for 90 days straight, only a few minutes in the morning and a few minutes in the evening. And if you look at this, the word in English is dynamism. And dynamism means that the circle or the feminine that's connected with the masculine it, and it's in balance, it creates an energy. It's a transforming energy. It can change your psychological perspective. It can heal you. It can change your life. I, as I started doing mandalas within a year or two or three, people were running around. What has happened to that Paul? Something has happened to him. Hey, Paul, please come. We'll get people together. We want you to teach us what you've discovered. And that my basic teaching was this very thing that you're learning now that establishes a transformation from mind being the most strong part of your life. And by the way, our colleges and our institutions in all our countries, India, America, it's the same, teach about development of the mind. They don't teach about the development of the heart. And the one thing about the heart I know for a fact, because I experience it all the time, is the heart. And when your heart is opened, and that's what we're going to try to do in these classes over the next few weeks, is open your heart. Because once that opens, your life can change 100% for the better. But it's, it's like anything else. You have to practice it. You can't sit down and draw this very simple line and think, oh, this is going to change my life. You have to be able to practice this. You know, there's a very famous man, Carl Jung, that's J-U-N-G, that was here in the Western culture. He actually went to India, oh, in the late 1800s, and he discovered the mandala. It had been there for many years, and he brought it back, and he wrote a whole book on the mandala's healing potential. And he used to do just what I'm teaching you every morning for many, many years, draw a little mandala, especially when he was upset, he was going through something strife. Uh, he had patients that were going through pains and suffering that he would teach them this very small thing. And as you do the mandala, you're revealing who and what you are. When somebody does a painting of a mandala in my class, I can see easily what's going on in their inner landscape. We don't really need to do that here yet, but maybe in the end, Maybe when we do a four-week mandala together, a little bit more complex than we're doing tonight, maybe we can look inside. Maybe we can, through modern times, we can send something through the text or through an email, and I can interpret it for you for each one of those persons. It's called a reading. It's like a soul reading. You get to see what the person is like on the inside. And when you do mandalas, it reveals your truth. So the important thing to know is that when you're doing this, whatever you're doing reveals what's going on inside you. That's the whole idea with art and beauty is you reveal it. There's other ways to do it. And when you're chanting, that changes your consciousness. Some athlete that runs 26 miles, that changes his constant, uh, consciousness. People dance this, people dream this. There's lots of ways, but this is a one way very ancient. When you sit down and do this, millions and millions and millions and millions of people have sat down and done this very thing over centuries. In modern times, we've lost a lot of the mysteries. Um, and that's what we're beginning to come back. So the little drawing, I'm going to do a couple more just little briefly steps. It'll only take just a few minutes is I'm going to make a couple of different size circles. So again, if you don't have a compass, try to get one for next week. And um, you can do it with cups and plates and that all works too. It's a little easier 
And I know throughout India, you can get a very in inexpensive compass for about the equivalent of a US one or two dollars. So they're not very expensive. It's a good thing to have. So you can see here what I've drawn. Can you see that the circles in the middle of the painting? So now that you have this basic um, foundation, we can begin to look at it and explore what it says. So when you start to look at this, and if you spend some time in this very simple little sketch, this is basically coming from you. It's a meditation from your inside to your outside. So when you look at this, and next week when we do this, we're gonna add color to this. We're gonna take a very simple design. We're gonna add color to it. Any color you want. It doesn't matter which colors you use, but we'll, we'll teach you how to put down colors. And then the last four sessions, we're gonna do four weeks of one drawing. So you can actually make a fairly um, simple, but a little bit more complex mandala that you can use for your healing. Now, when you start to look at this, See, this, this shirt I have, this comes from uh, Tibet, and the people there understand mandalas. So when you look at your little drawing here and what I'm wearing, it's the same thing. This is a little bit more complex, but this drawing is very little. So what the circles represent is stages towards your center. So if you put four or six or eight circles, it doesn't matter. It's your own uh, expression. You can do what you want. There's not a lot of rules, except one of the most basic ones is it all has to be around the center. Because as I spoke earlier, it's the set, um, it's this, it's the centering that were most important. And the reason the centering is so important is because it's, that's the healing capacity of a mandala. When my Tibetan teacher comes around into my home, and I'll take you on our journey together. We'll go, you'll get to walk through my home one day and get to see all the, um, the beautiful deities and the mandala paintings that I've not only collected, but I've painted myself for the last 30 years. So for this week, um, I don't think we need to go any farther than just this basic simple thing and see if this is just the beginning. If you can make something like this and you put a lot of time, you could like between now and next week, if you wanna make a lot of these, do it. To make a lot of these, take a picture, send it to us. We'll, we'll be happy to look at it. And it's the beginning of something as we go down into ourselves and we learn to center and balance ourselves for healing. And you know, one of the out forms of that is spiritual insights. We're not worried about that at the moment. Right now, we're just trying to get a basic foundation that's easy to do. If you want to go ahead and color one of these things in, color some colored circles, be free. I'll give you a little hint because we'll be doing this next week. Is in the Tibetan, and they're one of the most cultures that have been doing mandalas, you know, thousands of years. So this is not something new. This is an ancient practice that they see the world from here out. So when they make their paintings, they make the center and then they, they make the paintings go out. They go out. It's a different world when you're centered. And this is a way for you to have your center. So it's the, Sorry, beginning. It's the, it's the beginning of the practice. And this is just a brief introduction. So I'll be with you next week. And I appreciate uh, your time. And one last thing is, if you're gonna color this in, if you can see the both paintings on the back, is usually if you put the lightest color in the center, you don't have to, you can put the darkest color in, but the usual typical Tibetan mandala has light at the center and it moves out, it moves out. The other thing I might suggest to if any of you that are following us, whether it's two people or 2000, it makes no difference, is if you have a couple of questions, please send it. We'll see if we can answer all of them. Um, ask 
That's what my mother taught me. If you don't ask, you won't receive. So I'll please ask. We're open to any suggestions. This is just the beginning of our journey together. It's a good time to connect with like-minded people in the world. Um, you may have heard of Deepak Chopra and uh, he's been somebody I've worked with for the past 25 years, his company and his whole dream, which is definitely, I'm in there too, is to have people meditating and practicing spiritual art around the world together. So namaste. Thank you so much, Paul. That was wonderful. What a wonderful journey you took us upon, knowing about how healing just looking at mandalas could be. To close the session, let's center ourselves and ground ourselves again by keeping your hand or both your hands on your heart. This is a very healing position. We tend to comfort others and appreciate others, but not ourselves many times. If you simply keep your hands on your heart and take simple deep breaths in and out, you start feeling calm, start feeling grounded. To close, let's chant Om Shanti 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 Om three Om times. Om Shanti 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 Om Om Shanti 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 Om Om Shanti 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 Om. Thanking everybody for joining us today and for this collective positive healing energy. If you have any questions, you can use uh, the raise your hand option or type it in the chat. Any questions, any feedback you have? No, ma'am. No Thank you. No questions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so ma much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you all next Thank week you. again. And please, as Paul said, feel free to email us, share your paintings, share your experiences. We would love to hear from you. Thank you so much. And namaste once again. Thank you for being here. Have a great day. Thank you, Mom. Thank you.